Yeah, Dave, I was wondering if you've uh, made a decision on who's going to be starting tomorrow. Can you read my lips? Uh, no. I guess this was computed or muted. So we'll go with uh, we'll go with Bolden. What went into that decision to start with Bolden? Um, mostly because their lineup is about all right-handed, and uh, we just thought it was a good matchup. And then also, uh, as, as you've gotten kind of deeper into the scouting report, you mentioned they're basically all right-handed. What's your take on NJIT? Well, they're, they, don't, they don't strike out much. They're going to fight you. They're going to do whatever they need to score, whether it's bun or hit and run, move people around. They've got a couple guys with power, one for sure. Um, it's got a lot of power. So, uh, you know, the key for us is like every game is to throw the ball over the plate and uh, field the baseball. But, you know, they're hot. They've won eight or nine in a row and I don't know, 18 out of 22. And so they've won. They, they have a winning feeling and I'm sure they feel like they can come in here and win. And, uh, but really the key for us is we need to play well. And if we do that, things will, will hopefully go our way. Tom. Uh, hi, Dave. I was wondering if you could uh, give us the latest updates on Brady Slavens. Yeah, Brady's uh, was actually in uh, practice gear today and walking around and getting a little antsy as far as going up and trying to get a base hit for us. I don't see it yet. Um, you know, we did put him on the roster. Um, I think he's getting better every day. Obviously, I think uh, swinging the bat, there's a little twisting in there on that front foot when you start to swing, uh, that might be something that we're not ready to experiment with yet. So, uh, uh, not, not, not tomorrow anyway. Gotcha. Uh, you, you've talked about Kevin cops pretty much every time we've had you, uh, but he was named national player of the year today by college, uh, collegiate baseball. And uh, just, uh, <laughs> what more can you say about the guy, I guess? Yeah. I mean, I mean, you said it, what more can you say? He, uh, he has the numbers to back it up. He's so important to our team. I think they took all that into consideration. Um, he was the SEC pitcher of the year, took that into consideration. And, uh, you know, I just think, you know, talking with Lou Pavlich Jr., collegiate baseball, he just felt like it was a no-brainer. And it, he said it wasn't even that difficult of a decision. And, uh, just really happy for Kevin and, and the team. Thanks. Bob. Hey, hey Dave, how you doing? Good. Um, you know, you, you had to revamp your defense kind of on the run in Hoover, um, and, and it worked pretty well. I don't think you guys had any errors. Um, how, how well do you think that worked? And then now that you've had a week to practice, I assume with those guys in those spots, how, how much even better could, could you be this week, do you think? Well, you know, we did a good job last week and, uh, you know, fielded the ball or caught the ball, did what we needed to do. Obviously, with Brady at first and, you know, different players out there, it's, it's more of a defense with the offense. Now it's more of an offense with not quite as good a defense. It doesn't take a rocket science scientists to figure that out um, just because of if people have watched our team. So you, it's a tough pull on me and the coaches. We discuss it. How do we want to handle this? Who do we want to put where? But, um, you know, we've gotten we've gotten working with guys at different positions and, uh, you know, we'll we'll try to figure it out from here to tomorrow and put a lineup out there. Go with it. You know, I, I'd forgotten this. Um, but, but uh, Smith actually played first base in Arlington to open the year because I guess Matt was ill. And I think he had Slavens in the outfield, or no, I think he DH'd. But it just seemed like Cohen just kind of picked up where he left off at, at the start of the year there. Yeah, he played first base probably 70% of the time in the fall in scrimmages. We were trying to get him used to it and told him that was definitely an option for him. Um, plus, we wanted to, we, we like competition, and Brady was playing first, Brady was playing third, some outfield, Cohen played, Cohen's played everywhere, second, third. So, uh, he, he has experience there. And then you had to start the, the season. He was our first baseman going into it. And uh, he did a good job then. And we moved it around a little bit. And it, it's all worked out, obviously. Is, is Vermillion good to go? 
Or no, we're not going to pitch him this weekend. So he's, 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 he's not done for the year, but he's he does have a little bit of inflammation in there or fluid in there, and, and uh, they, you know, it it's they're working on getting it out of there so we can get him back. Okay, I might have a couple more. I'll, I'll turn it back to Kyle. But thanks, Dave. Chris. Hey, Dave. How does uh, Will Bolt, the coach, compare to Will Bolt, the player, from from what you remember of him? About the same, you know, same personality, you know. I will. You know, gritty, uh, tough, uh, comes to win, wants his team to win and lets them know about it. And I think they feed off of it a little bit. And I mean, he's been there, what, two seasons, first season, it was going pretty good for him. And, you know, COVID hit. And then this year they had a great year. They were picked like sixth overall and they came in first and they ran away with it. So uh, they've got good players, they've got good pitchers and, they're doing the little things right. They're fielding the ball, throwing strikes, and getting big hits, and that's what it takes to win win championships. So it's done a tremendous job. You guys stay in touch or communicate all throughout the season or anything like that? Yeah, mostly through texting, uh, a couple times on the phone, but mostly through texting, you know, watch their team play, congratulate them, or, you know, things like that, kind of vice versa. And uh, just met with him out on the field a little while. We had a good talk. So, yeah. yeah. Is there any uh... – any nostalgia in, in facing a former player? Or is, are you at the point in your career where, where the nostalgia has kind of kind of passed a little bit? You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I, I'm just, you know, happy that he's got a great job and that he's had a good career leading up to getting the great job. He deserved it, and once he got it, he's taken full advantage of it. He's where he wanted to be. Um, you know, you know, I've got some other players that are coaching. I don't particularly like playing former players and friends and coaches uh, because there's always one of us that didn't get me real happy at the end of the day, but, you know, more than anything, just happy that for them and their families that they're in the position that they're in. Thanks, Dave. All right, let me know if you have more questions, either raise your hand or put it in the chat. Nate. Yeah, Dave, as far as it's up the middle defense, have you ever coached or been around a team any better than, than this one that you have? I say probably not with if you're talking about the four players. You know, you start with your catcher, Opitz, and then our middle infield, those two guys, and then and then you go with Franklin in the center in center field. It's just it's solid, and uh, they 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 steal some runs, they make some plays, and they all they all bring a lot to the game. But I'd say probably I've had some really good shortstops, really good second baseman. Obviously, I've had some great catchers. McCann jumps out at me, and there's others. Had some incredible center fielders that could really run and catch the ball, even all the way back to my Nebraska days with Jamal Strong and some of those guys. But as far as four athletic guys in the middle there, uh, I'd say this is the best. Just in, collectively, what's the impact been on your success with them, just, just the defense in general? Well, I think it's a huge part of our success. You know, you, know, you always hear that, Defense wins your championship, especially in football. They don't score; it's hard to lose. Um, but it's that way in baseball. Uh, if you've got if you've got guys in the middle, and we've talked about it since fall baseball, we said we're going to be as good as anybody in the country up the middle if they stay healthy. And that's kind of what's going on. Thank you, Hutch. Dave, you mentioned earlier this week that y'all kind of got to get Monk back on track. How's he looked at uh, practice this week, and are you confident that he'll he'll bounce back this weekend? He's great this week. He, he was really good. Even in the even in the the defensive drills, throwing the ball, turning double plays, man, he was right on. So, coach says he's been good in his bullpen work and other things, and and I feel like he's he's fine. And then also another question about your defense. I mean, you've got guys like Nesbitt and Webb that you can sub in late as a defensive replacement. Uh, what what's that luxury like? And have you ever had a team like that where you have? such good defensive players to bring off the bench late in games. I mean, those two are two of the best, but uh, yeah, I've had some guys, usually it's one outfielder or maybe one infielder that's uh, can play anywhere that really good defensively that, that I could plug in, maybe not two in the same team, but definitely had a guy or two like that over the years that, that, you know, defensively either more experienced and a little more skilled than some of the guys that start and they start maybe because of the bat. Bob. 
Yeah, Dave, we were talking to uh, Robbie McClellan the other day, and he told us kind of a funny story about um, you recruiting him when he was at Seward, I guess is how you pronounce that, JUCO. Um, and I, he said, you know, it would have been a great choice. He picked Arizona State. Just wonder what you remember about that. And is that kind of a – it's so what a small world college sports can be sometimes. Yeah, it's uh... – you know, Coach Childress was my pitching coach at the time, and I think he probably did most of the recruiting. I probably made a call to him. But, you know, on the pitcher end, he was probably on that one pretty good. But I do remember him, and I remember the name. And I just kind of remember that, you know, I got – I remember Rob telling me that he – you know, that you know something along the line, the pitcher from Seward's going to Arizona State. And I think that was towards the end of me being there. You know, it was either my fourth year or last year that that went down. I'm not sure exactly, but – uh you got to give him credit. And I don't, I don't know how he ended out on the, he ended up on the East coast. I know he played pro ball and I don't know if he met somebody out there or played out there, but, you know, I made the comment the other day that, you know, his, his comfort zone was probably the Midwest and Arizona and Kansas and those areas. And he went East to, to coach. So it's a big commitment. I mean, that's taken a big step. And I know he spent seven years as a pitching coach and a couple of years as a, you know, maybe a interim type guy and in one year and then he got the job. So he's done a tremendous job with that program. And, and they're a they're a good team. I mean, they don't make too many mistakes. I don't know if you saw this. Um, probably not. But I guess uh, the NCAA Twitter account or something tweeted something about uh, Arkansas baseball being Goliath. Um, just just wonder what you, what you think about that, especially since you're, you're David, you know, <laughs> I think, you know, probably, you know, their thinking there is that we've had such a good year and that, you know, we're facing a team that's the first time, um, you know, in the tournament, I think, you know, that would be that comparison, a biblical comparison. I would say that, uh, you know, as far as the teams that we played over the last three months, you know, we're, we're just a good club that it's fine, found a way to win, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know how I take that. Okay. And, and then um, you guys are the number one overall seed. I mean, I know you, you've gone into these things as a high seed before, but do you, is there extra pressure on you guys or is this team kind of beyond that? Or just how do you feel about that? Well, I don't feel extra pressure. I just feel like that uh, if we play well, we have a chance to win. Um, if the games don't go our way, then they don't go our way, but our guys will get, a, will get after it, give you everything they got. So, uh, and then as far as the player, I don't feel like that they feel any pressure. I mean, I don't talk to them about it. I don't want to ask them. I don't, they don't need it. I don't, I see guys bouncing around and acting exactly like they acted three months ago, two months ago. And I don't see a bunch of guys with a different look on their face or being quiet because they're nervous. I just see the same team. I mean, you think about who all we played. Um, we've, we've taken on everybody and it's gone pretty good. It's been a battle, but uh it's not like we blew people out of the water. We had to fight for our wins. And so our team knows how to fight. It doesn't come easy all the time. So if things don't go well, we're not going to roll over. Uh, we'll fight you until they, until the last out. And, and then um, on NJIT, they've got sort of their, their version of cops. You know, Rappaport's got eight wins and 10 saves. And I realize he didn't pitch against the SEC teams and all that. But I well, wonder what you think about him. Yeah, I mean, it, it's great to have a guy like that. I mean, especially for a coaching staff. You know, he's a lefty. He throws strikes. Uh, you know, I've tried to watch some video on him and seeing what he's doing against lefties compared to how he handles righties. And um, looks like he's got some energy and he feels good about where he's at right now. And it sounds like the team plays good behind him and they're confident. And that, that is a lot like uh, when Kevin's on the mound for us. Thanks, Thanks Dave. Tom, have you seen video of the guy Stafflinger who they're going to start against you? What do you think of him? Yeah, we've seen some. It's it's not like it's from right behind home plate. Some from high up, kind of to the left, and then um, from out from behind, maybe a center field fence, a little bit of an angle. I mean, he looks like to me that he just likes to pound the strike zone. He's gonna, you know, he's got a, a slower breaking ball. Uh, tries to mix in that that fastball in and out, and uses his defense. Uh, you know, he'll strike some guys out, but he pitches the contact a little bit, tries you to get hit, to, you know, get you to hit his pitch. And if you get a hit on it, he tips his cap and he moves on. Um, you know, we saw some video from uh, late March and early April. So that's about all we could really come up with. 
but at least we got to see him pitch some, see arm action, uh, kind of see some the break on the breaking ball. I mean, he's a he's probably 22, 23 years old, fifth year senior, and he's probably not going to be intimidated. And what are your thoughts about your game two starting pitcher? Our game two starting pitcher. What do I think about him? I think he'll be left-handed and he'll be pretty good. <laughs> Could be either one, huh? Yeah, yeah. All right, thanks. Yeah. All right, that wraps us up. Thanks, Coach. Okay, okay. thanks, guys.